Welcome everybody to Our Green Acres. I'm Teresa. Today's video, I'm going to take y'all along as I recreate some items for Easter and springtime. I'm also going to show you some items I've recently purchased, and I'm going to show you some ways of how you can style them in your home for Easter and spring decor. I hope y'all enjoy the video, and I hope you get lots of inspiration and ideas for your home. Make sure to stick to the end because I'm going to show you some really great items that I got at Dollar General for spring and Easter. Okay, let's get started, y'all. The first project is going to be this little Dollar Tree bunny. Now, I picked him up last year, but I want to recreate him. So, what we're going to do is... Uh, we are going to take all the little tinsel off of him. And these type of items right here from Dollar Tree that have tinsel on them, they have them, you know, around all the holiday seasons. So it's very easy just to cut it and get it started and then you just start unraveling it. And it comes off the form really easy. The next thing we want to do once we get all the tinsel removed is we want to go around and we want to clip off as many of these little tabs as we can. That way when we wrap it in yarn, we will have a smooth finish. And we can go over the edges a lot better and those won't stick out. Now you can use your fingers. Sometimes these will just break right off of your fingers. You can use scissors or your clippers. Now I'm starting out with some hot glue around the bottom because that's where I'm going to start. And then you want to you put a really good amount of hot glue to get started. Because we're going to go around some rounded edges and that way our yarn won't slip. Now once you start... Right here, it went really well because it doesn't slip, and so I'm only going to apply glue where I need it. But I went around, and once you get up to about the middle ways, then you'll want to start adding more hot glue. Because once you're going around those rounded edges, your yarn will start to slip, and then you'll want to apply glue on the ends and place your yarn down and just get it going back, you know, consistent as much as you can. Now, around the middle was about the worst part. After I got past that, then it started wrapping around real easy again. Now, the yarn I'm using, I think I got at Walmart, or this may be some that I have in my Amazon store. So, I always have a link to my Amazon store in my description box, and also I'll pin it in a top comment. So, it'll, you know, be easy to get to. But it's a really soft yarn. I've used this on a lot of my projects. And then when I got to the bottom, I'm just going to go around and I'm going to hot glue it across the bottom as best I can so you can't see it. Now, the ears were really easy. You just want to start off with some hot glue, get your yarn in place, and then you just want to start wrapping. Now, the ears, once you get those done, I want to do the same thing on the ends. Just apply some hot glue, wrap your yarn, and just make sure you can't see the form. Now, once I got that ear done, I just went over and I went around and did the other ear. Now, when you're working on your form, if you have a, a spot that shows or if you got some form that you can see, don't worry. You know, adjust your yarn the best you can, but if it still shows through, just apply some glue and some more yarn and just wrap over those areas. Now, I want to show you some different options for faces. This is when you can really bring the personality of your bunny to life. You can add buttons and make your own face. I just went over the pieces that Dollar Tree had provided and I painted them with some chalk paint just to kind of um, mute down those bright colors. Now here's some options for your ears. If you want to get some pink felt, go around and use the Dollar Tree ears as patterns. You can. Now if you want to make some whiskers, I'm just showing you different options. Uh, you know, you can make some little whiskers out of the sisal rope and I just took a few strands and then I just um, frayed them on the ends. I tied them in the middle in a knot. And then I'm just going to apply my little nose on top of it with a little bit of hot glue. So just want to show you different options of how you can really, you know, create your little bunny's personality in its face. And then stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to make this little, this little ragged lace bow here in just a minute. Now I don't know where you are. I 
miss you so bad, won't you come back to me? I've got you in my head, you're all that I see. I've lost all my chances, I know that I am too late. Now I want to show you a cute little project that I'm going to use some little yard sale bunt pans. These are little mini ones and I pay a quarter each for these. But I've had these in my supplies for a while and then I, I just had a great idea because I love this little bunny mold right here. He is so popular and I've used him so many times but I never get tired of him. So I just, you know, put some cornstarch in my mold. I got my air dry clay out and then I made my little bunny and I always apply mine with wood glue. Now I'm just going to put a little bunny on the front of one of the little mini pans and then on the front of the other one I'll show you the mold I use for it. Now once you get your mold on you'll want to lay your pan down to where your bunny won't slip off because once you put that glue on there it will slide and let it dry. Now this is an IOD mold. It was a first generation mold. It is retired but if you google it you may can still find it. So some vendors may still sell it. I will link it down below the name of it. So I just applied it to my other little mini pan. I took them outside after my molds had dried and I'm just going to give them a couple of coats of Rust-Oleum white chalk paint. I went around them with my fingernail with that spray paint and I gave them some distressing. I just kind of chipped around on the paint with my fingernail. So now I've got some cute little mini pans I can put on tear trays. I can add, you know, some raffia to it. Uh, and just add some eggs and I'm going to show you these eggs here in just a minute and tell you all about where I got these from because these right here are absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to give you some ideas of how you can stage these little mini pans. I'm out of time, but I'm still thinking of you. My heart keeps on bleeding. I have scars, the ones that Now the next piece is going to be a thrifted um, piece that I just acquired from Goodwill and I paid $5.99 for it. I showed in a previous video and I'll link it down below of how I made some book hangers out of the hooks from this drawer. The drawer alone um, is awesome. You can tell it's old. Somebody, I don't know, they had redone it, put this piece of burlap on it and they glued it down with some kind of cement glue. This stuff was tough. It had holes in the bottom where they had screwed those very decorative knobs in. And y'all, the knobs that come off of this, there's no telling how much those would have cost me if I would have bought all of those from Hobby Lobby. So for $5.99, I got a drawer and a lot of nice hardware. Now, it did have some damage. We did go in with some wood glue in one of the corners. We did fix it. We did get that... Um, that glue sanded down where it wasn't rough and then I went in and I filled in all those little holes from the knobs with some um, wood filler and I'm going to fill in these on the front because I'm not going to put hardware on it. I was and then I changed my mind but I just went over it with some white linen chalk paint. I went around with some sandpaper and I distressed around the edges and the corners really good. Now, I, there were so many options of things I wanted to do with this and I couldn't decide, but I'm going to go with an IOD transfer because I love these. These come out of the Brocant book and I'm going to link the transfer books that I use in the video today. I'll link them down below. Um, so I'm just going to go over it. I applied one of those and then I'm going to add some feet to it. Y'all know I love these feet. You can also get feet like these at Hobby Lobby. And if you go when they're half off, you can get them very affordable. I get these at Lowe's. You get a pack of two for like um, less than $2.50. So very affordable. So now I'm just going to stage it for you and just show you, you know, anytime you see old drawers on the side of the road or maybe you run across them at thrift stores or you know yard sales I always pick up drawers because there are so many uses for them you know you can store vintage dishes in them you can stage them so many ways I'm thinking of you I'm thinking of you Okay, the next project is going to be a tray. And y'all, probably my all-time favorite projects to work on is probably going to be trays. If they're wood, metal, I don't care. They're, they're fun and easy projects to work on. I'm going to repurpose this one. I did it in a Christmas video a while back. So I went outside, I spray painted it 
white. I gave it a couple of coats, and now I'm going to use this Farm Animal Rabbit from IOD. Y'all absolutely love this rabbit. I always have. So I'm just going to apply him with some black um, ink, and that's all it is to it. And this made a great piece now that I can set up for Easter and springtime. I know it's too late. I'm out of time, but I'm still thinking of you. Tick tock, the clock keeps ticking. Okay, y'all, now we're going to make a chocolate bunny out of a thrifted bunny. Now, I've seen this on a couple of channels, and I'm going to leave links to their channels down below. But I got this little thrifted bunny, and she's super cute. She's shabby chic, but I've been seeing on a couple of YouTube channels where you can spray paint these brown, and they look like chocolate bunnies. And Ashley Hughes with Hanging with the Hughes and also Mother Thyme, I watched their channels and they did a videos both on how they spray painted their bunnies to make them look like chocolate. Now they use Rust-Oleum. I think the color was Espresso. That chalk paint was $7, $7 I think. So I just went with the Dollar General version and I think that can was 5 But you just take it outside, give it a couple of coats of brown um, shiny paint and y'all they look like chocolate bunnies. I just you know, basically tied a little cream ribbon around it and look how cute this looks in my decor. If you're about me too. Now, it's too now I'm going to show you how to make some really cute little shabby chic no sew lace um, bows. Now I got this, the inspiration from this from a YouTube channel and I'm going to list it down below, but her name was Latoozle. So I'm going to wrap, this is about 57 inches long of lace. It's four inches wide. Now the YouTube video that I watched, she made hers different than this. She wrapped hers around her fingers and made hers smaller. And she wrapped hers in the middle with a rubber band. I tried that method and it didn't work well for me. So I kind of come up with my own method. So I wrapped mine just laying it down flat and just kind of, you know, wrapping it over itself until I wrapped it about eight times. And I made them about seven inches when I wrapped it. I made it about seven inches long because I wanted a bigger bow. And then you want to just tie it real tight in the center. And then you want to go through with some sharp scissors and you want to cut open those loops. You want all your loops then to be open. And once you get them all open and cut, then you just want to go through with your fingers. You want to separate them really good. And what we're going for is we want it to be kind of ragged. Um, a ragged look. So now we're going to go in with some sharp scissors and I'm going to swap scissors here in just a minute because these just weren't sharp enough. But you just want to now just kind of cut in. You don't want to cut all the way into the middle and cut them off but you just kind of want to snip about halfway down. Like I say you just want them to look tattered and torn looking and then you want to just keep on scrunching them and working with them with your fingers and then you want to start over on the other side. Now with this project please be be careful because especially if you're using really sharp scissors and you're cutting with your hands and your fingers down there just be super careful now I just went across the edges of mine I just kind of want to you know you just want to shape it as you go and I just kind of you know worked it until I felt like I had it in a bow <laughs> in a bow shape and then just add an embellishment to it you can add bow um buttons to them you can add some totally dazzle jewelry you can put these on so many things so just another idea for embellishments for your projects I'm thinking of you Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make some vintage stack books. Now, this is nothing new. You you know, we have seen so many ideas and inspiration on how to make stack books. 
but basically just take some books you've we're, you know acquired at the thrift store i can get these at my library for a quarter you want to take some that are consistent in size remove the jackets and then you're going to want to remove the hardback all you want is the paper copy of the book and you want that torn ragged binder and the more ragged and age looking it is the better now for this project i'm just going to use three books but you can stack yours you know and use as many books as you want but basically i'm going to put a transfer on the top but you could probably put a transfer on those binders i've never tried it to see if it would stick that way but i'm sure it would but i'm just going to take since that had a really pretty front page i'm just going to pick one of the um, transfers out of the brocant book and I'm going to apply it to the front page of this book then I'm just going to tie uh, a ribbon around it and that's all I'm going to do and that is just how easy it is and I try to give you lots of projects and ideas and inspiration on how to use your transfers because once you invest in them and you you know you have them around there are so many things that you can do with them and right now transfers to me are they are so fun and they're so easy and they'll go on just about anything but the ribbon I tied on is an old bed sheet so never throw your sheets away just rip them up and they make great ribbon Now using those same transfers, I'm going to show you a really easy project, project just using a piece of scrap wood. And y'all know I love scrap wood. This is a piece I've probably used in another project, but I just chalk painted it and I had distressed it. Now I'm going to take another one of those transfers. I'm just going to show you how easy the transfers can be to apply to something like this. They apply really well to wood and just how much... Um, this just bumps up a piece of scrap wood and now to embellish it I want to give you another idea little girls headbands now you can find these a lot of times very affordable these come from Burke's outlet I got three to a pack for $4.99 just put your little headband on your project and it's, it's that easy you don't even have to make a bow <laughs> Okay, the next item I'm going to show you is an item that I purchased on Etsy and I want to share it with you in case you want some. These were made, handmade, y'all, little crocheted eggs. These are made by Carrie and the, the little Etsy shop is called Little Something Chic. Now, she has an Instagram handle and I'm going to leave all of her information down below. She offers them in these really pretty muted um, neutral colors and she, I think she also has them in a pastel color. Y'all, these arrived so quick and I want to say they're less than $12 or around the $12 range. These are absolutely beautiful to be handmade. She also get, gave me a handwritten thank you note and I always think that is such a personal touch. So just wanted to share these with y'all in case you want to go out and get some. Make sure to go over and check her out on Instagram. Okay, on Wednesday, I put out a video of my, a new Dollar General that was um, close to my home, and I gave y'all a, a shop with me. I took y'all in the store and let y'all see, see some really pretty spring decor for 2022. And then I told you I would, uh, you know, feature what I purchased in my next video. So, of course, today I'm going to show you some of the things I got. There will be some more things upcoming because I'm not going to have time uh, to put them all in this video today, but stay tuned and in my next video, I'll put some more But I just want to show you some of the things that I purchased from that video Y'all their spring decor is absolutely gorgeous 
But as you can see, I got that white tray, and I want to stage it for you in just a minute, and I also got that beaded garland. Now, I'll leave a link to that video down below, so make sure to go out and watch it, and then this one will make more sense. But y'all, they're candlesticks. This candlestick right here was not at that store, but it was at another Dollar General, and it was only $8. They only had one of them, and I guess I better be glad, because if I would have had more, I would have bought more of them. Now, I also purchased this little bunny. I had um, featured him. He was just $1. He come in yellow, blue, and pink, so I grabbed a pink one. I bought for $1. You know, he is so cute just to sit around in your Easter and your spring vignettes, and I didn't even have to do anything to him. You can also see the beaded garland. It was only $4. And I love that sage green. And I, and as I featured in my previous video, it come in black and, and another color. So, but anyway, that sage green. And it looks so pretty with my little crocheted eggs. Now, I also showed you in the craft section, they had these little whitewashed planks for $2. I'm going to show you just a really easy project for $2. And you've got your iron orchid designed farm animal stamps. Take your rabbit. And apply some black ink to him and I'm showing you here if you get ink around the edges uh, of, of your mat of your of your rabbit or whatever you're stamping this is that was a good technique just use a baby wipe and go around it and that way that will you know eliminate if you get any bleeding I know that's been helping me because every time I stamp I learn <laughs> I learn more things of how to stamp better but just apply you know him on there press him down really good and look how cute he made this little $2 plank from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to add a little bow to it, and now he's ready to sit around. Yes, I know my name. I want to hold his hand, because I can't stop thinking about him. Now, I also featured this little shelf sitter. It was $1, and I'm going to give you some cute ideas of things that you can do with it. Another item that I got at Dollar General that I thought was a really good deal were these corbels. Now, you got a pack of two for $7. This is a smaller size, and in the video, I also showed you a larger size that had some added wood accent piece to it that were 10. So, Dollar General has really upped their game because corbels can run up in the money. But these just make great little... Um, you know, bookends for your books. You don't have to use both of them. You could also add a piece of scrap wood to it and make a shelf out of them. Now, I got this cute little planner. It was $5. They had this in a couple of colors. Now, this home sign, they had some great wall uh, decor um, pieces. It was only $3. But I automatically, when I saw it, it's a very nice piece. It's very heavy. <laughs> But I thought, you know, this will be great to display on your chair tray. You know, you could also add it to some open shelving. But it just makes a great piece that you can just add to any of your vignettes just to add a little bit more detail. Now, the bunny that's in my tear tray and also the tear tray that you see, these will be linked in my Amazon store. So, if you're looking for some cute Easter and spring decor for your home, make sure to check out my Amazon store. Okay, y'all, it's that time again where I have to tell y'all goodbye, but I hope y'all enjoyed the video today. I hope y'all enjoyed seeing all the things that I recreated and I made, and I hope I gave y'all lots of inspiration and ideas for your home for Easter and springtime. As always, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. I love y'all, and I will plan to see y'all in my next video. Bye, y'all.